Dodge and burn is the art of selectively lightening or darkening portions of a photograph. Changing the value of light is the main tool employed by artists for centuries to show form, surface quality, texture, and depth. By changing the tonal values, a circle becomes a sphere, a rectangle becomes a cylinder, and a triangle becomes a cone. But dodge and burn is so much more than that. It can be used to guide the viewer's eye and to simplify a busy composition by separating objects. I'm going to show you a super easy yet powerful way of dodging and burning in Photoshop. Spoiler alert, we will not be using the dodge and burn tool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you one of my favorite methods of dodging and burning in Photoshop. This is going to create a three-dimensional form of your photographs and make them stand out from the crowd. I do want to quickly mention Dean Collins' amazing training on three-dimensional contrast. It's the seminal lighting training that will change the way you light your photographs and videos. A link below. Dodging and burning comes from the photographic darkroom, where exposure is controlled in certain areas while making a print. Ansel Adams elevated this technique. Dodging. Lightening areas of a photo. An object is used to block the light and this causes a lighter exposure. Now we're working from a negative. Burning. Darkening areas of a photo by allowing light to hit just a portion of the image. This is used a card, you know, cutting it out, different types of things like that, stencils. By using software like Photoshop, we have much more control than ever over dodging and burning. We're essentially digitally doing what Ansel Adams did in the darkroom. I've created a two and a half hour training course on dodging and burning, where we explore different techniques for adding shape and form, contrast, body sculpting, facial contouring, and even working with multiple exposures for stunning landscapes. I'll add a link to that below too. All right, so let's prepare everything. The first thing we want to do is hit the D key on the keyboard to reset the foreground and background colors. Then we can hit the B key to open up the brush tool. Let's click up the top and we're going to go into the brush options. So let's choose first of all a very soft edge brush here. And then we want to make sure that everything is turned off except for transfer here. Let's turn transfer on and don't worry about smoothing, that's fine. And we want to set opacity to pen pressure. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet, then go ahead and do this. If you're using a mouse, you can still follow along and I'll show you the difference in a second. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to close this. And then we want to set the main opacity or the master opacity to 30%. We can tap the three key to do that. Now I'm able to use light pressure to paint lighter than that 30%. Just 30 is going to be the maximum I can do if I push as hard as I can with my tablet. Now, if you're using a mouse, set it to a low value, like about 10, and then you can build it up a little bit slower. Uh, but you can still follow along and dodge and burn using a mouse, although I will say a pressure sensitive tablet and pen makes life a lot easier. All right, the next thing we want to do is set up our layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the new layer icon, but I'm going to hold down the Alt key and that would be Option on Mac. And that's going to bring up the new layer with options. So let's look at our options. What we're going to do is we're going to call this one Dodge, or you could call it Lighten. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change this to Overlay Blending Mode, and we're going to fill with our neutral color here, 50% gray. Okay, so this is going to be Dodging or Lightening. We're going to click OK. Now we want to duplicate this layer and just hit Command J or Control J to do that and rename it to Burn. Now you could also call this one Darken if you wanted. Now the way I remember the two is Burnt Toast is dark. So when you're burning, it's going to be darkening, whereas when you're dodging, it's going to be lightening. We're all set to begin now. Now these are the same steps we'll use for every image. In fact, if you click the link below, I'm going to give you a free dodging and burning kit, which will contain my dodging and burning action, the same photo I'm using here, and a written PDF of this tutorial. All right, let's create some art. So what we want to do is start with the burning, and we want to make sure we've selected black as our foreground color. Hit the X key, we'll toggle these colors. 
and with our brush on, we're going to make our brush a little bit bigger. Now I'm just going to tap on the right bracket key to do that. If you're using the tablet, you can actually just go down here and change the brush size using your touch ring. That's another option. Okay, so let's start with a big brush. And what we want to do is just set our overall mood for this image. So for a big, huge brush, I'm just going to darken up on the sky here. So I'm just going over once. I'm going to go over another time and impossibly even go over a third time in the top there just to set that. Also, what I want to do is just gently paint. I'm just going to put a little dark in the bottom just to kind of add a vignette. And this is about drawing the eye into the photo. Now let's go into the dodging area and we're going to hit the X key. So now we're selecting white as our foreground color. And we want to just make it look like some sunshine is coming through this valley. So let's just make that brush a little smaller and just go across. And see what we're doing there? We're just painting in the sunshine. So now we've set some kind of a overall mood here. If we turn off the layers and we look at it before and after, you can see what we've done is we've set up our overall composition here before we go in and do the detail. And you can see how this has already changed the photo quite a lot. It's super easy what we're doing so far. So why don't we zoom in a little bit now though, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab the black for the foreground color. Let's zoom in a little bit. And now we're gonna start adding a little bit of dimension in here. So make sure we're on the burn layer, grab a smaller brush, and we're gonna think about where the light is hitting. You can see the light is kind of hitting here so this area is in shadow. So what we're going to do is go into these shadow areas and just paint in a little bit. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of adding a little contrast into those shadow areas there. And we're deepening the shadows essentially. So let me just go on this side and we go here and see how it starts to chisel it out a little bit. And it starts to add form. So let's look here. It looks kind of flat, but we go in here and see how that shadow just starts to chisel out the shape in those rocks. Now I'm going to do this big and smooth. You could also go with a smaller brush and go in very, very tight and you'll get a very different result. What we're doing here is going to give us a little bit of a painterly result, but it's also going to show off the dimension really nicely. You see what we're doing there? And even we could just spread that out a little bit. Now I'm going to do this quickly because I don't want to be uh, here all day. Now when I'm working on a final project, it's not uncommon for me to spend an hour or so doing this dodging and burning step that I'm going to do for you in just a few minutes. So don't expect it to be perfect. I just want to really show you guys how the technique works. And you can see how it's starting to add dimension here. Now, if this feels like it's a little too strong, you can always drop the opacity down a little bit. In fact, I'm going to drop it down to about 20 because I do feel it's a little strong. And I'm just going to quickly just go down here, just following these edges. See that? And we're just deepening the shadows, essentially. And where are the shadows? Well, those are the areas that are dark. And if you're unclear, you can define it by just dodging and burning here, by just painting it in those darker areas, see that? So we're just going down here, darkening it. And let's go a little bit around the base, mm, don't like that. Let's go just a little bit around the base here, I'm going to make these a little smaller. And I'm just adding a little shadow there into the valley. And as well as defining these areas and making them pop a little bit, what it's also doing here is it's adding a little bit more depth to our photograph. And it's also making it look like we have that sunshine in that valley because sun casts shadow. And so I'm just going to go down there and I'm going to stop. Like typically, you know, I'll spend a lot of time going into all these little areas here and can really, really get in there and add a lot of detail. Once again, I just want to show you the tutorial. Okay, so let's zoom out. And let's look at this before and after. So there we go, before and after. Okay, it might feel like it's a little strong right now, but that's okay. We can take our opacity and we can drop it down. See that? All right, so that looks like enough. Now let's go into our dodging. And why don't we do the same thing? Now we're going to lighten. 
This is the exciting part though, because what we're actually doing now is we're going to be painting with light. And this is, I really enjoy this part. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Watch what happens when we start to paint on top of these treetops. Look at that. It's just like beautiful light now is just kissing the top of those treetops. Isn't that beautiful? And I'll just do a little bit more there. Now, once again, I would go through and I would do all of these trees and all the bushes and the grass and just spend a little bit more time than I will on this tutorial. All right, let's go into our mountains again. And this time, let's add our highlights. So we want to just be kind of going right next to where we were with our shadow, but this time we're adding light. And what this is going to do is it's really going to just make it pop. Look at this. See how that sun's just kind of kissing there, hitting the edges. Look at that. And this just brings it alive. Right on that edge. And see where we did the shadow? Let's go right next to it with our highlight and see how that just really just brings those areas forward. So the areas that we paint light seem to come forward more, whereas the areas that we paint dark tend to go back into the photograph. And see what, see what this is doing? It's just adding this dimension. And what we're doing is essentially taking a flat shape and adding depth to it. This is great for photo retouching, matte painting, digital painting. We can apply this technique to so many different things. And I'm going to give it a little bit more on top because you know what? It's not going to be in so much shadow. The sunlight's going to be hitting up there. Okay, I think you get the general idea. So if we look at this before, there's the original photo. See how flat it is? And now we can go here and we've added our dodging and burning and we've added a lot more depth. Now we could take our dodging and drop that down a little bit if we feel that's too strong. And here's the next thing we need to do is I want to do some color correction with all of this together. Now I save it till this stage because I want the dodging and burning to be in there with all the correction, the tonal and color, and that way it brings it all together and makes it feel like it's part of the original. So what we're going to do is select the three layers, grab the bottom layer, hold the shift key to select them all. And we're going to right click. And what we're going to do is convert to a smart object. Now we've got the smart object. Everything's non-destructive. We can go into here to our camera raw filter and let's make some final adjustments. First thing I want to do is just warm this up. So let's go into temperature here. Oh, look at that. What a difference. And now I just want to darken down the sky a little bit. Let's grab our gradient tool. Holding down the shift key to constrain that. We're just dragging that down. And let's pull the exposure down just a little bit. Let's recover all those highlights. And we can take the temperature down just slightly, just to cool it down just a little bit. Maybe exaggerate it a little more. There we go. All right, so now we want to go and make some more adjustments here. Let's play around for our overall exposure. It's pretty nice. Let's recover a little bit of our highlight and shadow detail because we're going to bring it right back here by the blacks. Watch the histogram. We want that to be right on the edge. And same thing on the other side for the whites. So this is how I like to do contrast like that rather than using the contrast slider. And look how that's just starting to come alive. Maybe just give it a very, very just breathe on the clarity. Don't give it too much. And let's cheat with just a touch of vibrance just to make it a little bit more colorful. And you know what? We're looking good. Let's click OK. And there we go. So I have a question for you guys. Do you use any kind of pressure sensitive pen? Now we'd be a Wacom or something else. Let me know in the comments underneath. I'd love to know. And if you like these kind of tutorials, which are straight to the point without any hype, hit the subscribe button right now. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you know when I upload a new tutorial, which is every Tuesday, and also some other bonus stuff throughout the week. So anyway, if you like this tutorial, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.